Nestled away in the Rocky Mountains lies the Colorado Springs Flea Market, where you can enjoy the food, the drinks, and vendors of all kinds. But under the blue steel roof inside the pavilion, this is where the toys are. So Funko Pops. Funko Pops have been one of the hottest uh, selling items in the last four, five, six, seven years. Well, four or five years it really caught on. It started about in, I want to say in 2008. But uh, they started out like this. And kind of a tall, un, un um, not very desirable. But when they went to this type of Funko Pop, they blew up. Uh, they were, they're probably the hottest thing collectible right now. Everybody can enjoy them. Everybody can relate to them. They go to, uh, they relate to video games, old 80s movies, 70s movies, some of the old icon movie stars and rock legends. Uh, there's just so much that people can relate to any of these Funko Pops. Uh, families collect together. They always, they have something that they could do together and buy just Disney for the kids and then some people like to buy the horror genre stuff that stuff is really really hot uh, music then with Funko Pops the thing about Pops is when they get vaulted once they get vaulted their uh, the values of the, them go up typically you could buy them when they first come out 10 to 15 dollars but once a pop gets vaulted you can no longer buy that specific pop and it just really goes up in value. This here is my wall of expensive pops, uh, and not big ones, I mean, but you got pops that are worth thousands of dollars. Really limited pops, but some of the ones that are average, I mean, we, you could sell them for four, five, six hundred dollars. There's people that collect only grail pops, and that could be an expensive hobby. When you buy cheaper pops, it's fun. They're fun to display. Everybody, like I said, can relate to the different kind of pops that are available. These are my good pops. These are the expensive ones. Uh, and expensive, I mean more like affordable, expensive. We have some that are 60. Uh, we sold one last week for $400. Uh, I wish I had that to show you. The Sun Pops, uh, $85. You got some that are pets that are like $40. X-Files, uh, Sons of Anarchy autographed ones. We got an artist here that shows that comes in and he'll do artwork on some of them to make them unique and make them different. Wrestling, you got uh, football heroes, Travis Kelsey, uh, then you come to Marvel and stuff like that. The pops, it just depends on how many they make. When they vault them, if they're not very popular, those are the pops that'll go up in value fast. The ones that are popular are, take a long time to get vaulted, so they keep making them and they don't go up in value when they get vaulted, but not as much as some of these other ones. Action figures are basically what we do. We have tons of action figures. Uh, some of the best action figures that we have are the Transformers, G.I. Joes, uh, Masters of the Universe, we have Thundercats. Um, we pride ourselves in trying to carry vintage, awesome action figures. And as you can see here, like this Transformers case, we have tons of Transformers just different variety of action figures. All these little Masters of the Universe action figures, Battle Beast action figures, Bandai action figures. I mean, action figures. Masters of the Universe all along this wall here. We have wrestlers, 80s, just different types of action figures. We have them boxed, loose, in packaged turtles. We got a set of uh, the uh, soft head turtles right there. 
Um, we always are looking to try to make sure that everything's complete. Uh, like his low light here, he's got his backpack, you know, he's got his gun, action figures. We want to make sure everything that you can find on the little tiny piece from the grenade all the way to the big gun. Um, we have a person that works with us, his name is Jesse great guy um, and he does a lot of our sorting and inventory things of what we have and what we don't have or what goes with what and what and we package up action figures because everybody wants to have a gun everybody needs to have a little piece of something to go with it so we work really hard to make sure that our action figures are not only clean complete and actually just good shape uh, we actually sell them for a good price The business of this has changed a lot because of the generations. And when I say that, you know, as the generations get older and as they get on, the toys change. Um, and learning about those generations is really uh, essential to your business. Because I have everybody walk in here from 60 year old gentlemen to five year old children. And the five year old children has no idea about us, you know, of uh, 60. G.I. Joe doll with the fuzzy hair, uh, he has no qualm for that. But he is looking for the new Transformers. You have to be, you know, know your customer. Know who's buying what, know what's coming out, know what's not coming out, and be on top of what's gonna happen to continue your business and to keep up with what's going on out there. Pokemon has been around since 1998 here in America. Um, and even from the beginning, it has been extremely popular. Um, you have your very iconic characters such as Charizard, Blastoise, Venusaur, and even from then, um, people have just been absolutely after all these cards. And um, and as I, it, one of the f most fun things to do is just open up a booster pack for you know three, four bucks, and then you you can get a card that's worth five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten dollars or more, um, and just the trading aspect of it is absolutely amazing and it's it's super sought after um, you got anything from people who collect their favorite art to people who try to build full sets um, and just the actual aspect of people just going after cars that they're trying to build their decks for and win tournaments and play leagues and everything of the nature of that When you, if you're a young kid in this day and age, um, Pokemon is everywhere. You've got cartoons, you've got uh, little toy figures everywhere in the stores and the malls. Um, you go to school and all your, your friends have them. So when you walk into a shop like this, as soon as you see those, you immediately get this feeling that you want to be part of everyone else and, and you want to get these cards, you want to trade them with your friends, you want to uh, play with your friends um, and all that fun stuff. If, you're, if you walk into my shop and you're were around this back in the day, back in the late 90s when this first came around, here I am in my mid-30s now, um, you get a huge sense of nostalgia. Um, so back then, if you were a young kid and you couldn't afford that Charizard card, you know, skip forward 20, 25 years, and here you are an adult with a job, and maybe you have a couple extra bucks in your pocket, and now you want to relive your childhood. It's, it's giant nostalgia from back then too. So I always tell people, Never underestimate the power of a nerd who has grown up now because they have money and they'll, they'll get what they want. Uh, one of the biggest messes is comics come in every single week and there's so many of them it just takes a while to go through all of them. Selling comics, the older stuff is always a lot easier to sell. The newer stuff, um, it just depends on people's taste nowadays, or if it becomes a spec book. With the comic book collector, um, when I talk to them, usually when I find out what they like, I, we can um, kind of converse about what we like about the character, or sometimes they'll like a character, I don't really know much about the character, then we start talking about it and we start learning things from each other. It's always a learning experience with comics. Keeping um, comics in stock, sometimes it's very easy and sometimes it's extremely impossible. Um, if a book goes hot, it's never going to stay in stock. Um, but with uh, other books, depending on the title, it could 
pretty much last forever. Running a business, um, especially a retro gaming store, it's a little bit harder to find the stock because what's out there is out there. Um, but we try our best to, you know, um, get as much product as we can for a fair price. So we do market price here. Um, some of the ups, you know, you get to provide memories. And then uh, some of the downs is just finding the stock and available. Um, and then a lot of people are uh, you know, starting to jack up the prices and stuff because it's, it's really rare on some of the games. Uh, interactions with the customers, they, they vary. Um, for the most part, it's always great. Um, they kind of become a second family here. So, you know, everyone's they're out for the memories for the retro aspect. So, everyone wants to go back and relive their childhood. Uh, the first game store I went to was Play and Trade way back in the day. <laughs> I think it's gone through different you know, owners and ups and downs, but going in there, I remember just seeing the wide variety and then you know, of course, like the Hollywood videos and all that, you know, looking there and just begging my parents for <laughs> to get a rental on that. And, you know, even if we didn't have the system, I thought it was still cool. Uh, it feels great, man. Um, I get to be in control and, you know, really kind of, you know, put in perspective and, you know, keep those same memories of me going to different stores. And I kept that unique perspective on it. I've got really loyal customers. Um, you know, they give me compilation lists, and we go out and find it for them. Um, we have people that come, you know, once, twice a week, and so, and then I get emails daily on that. So um, I'm very fortunate in that regard. So with Star Wars, it started with 1978 Drive-In. I, I literally remember the first time. I was about three and a half years old, and I remember the Imperial Death March. And from there, Darth Vader and everyone else from there held, held a really special place in my heart. So that was, of course, the first toy I ever had. So kicking and screaming, I got you know my little toys on sale here and now and again. That's why I, I still like to have them. I still like to see them in their pure state. They existed out there. Now there might be millions of them out there, but the quest to find the nicest ones and the complete ones is what every collector has in mind. So when I go out there and I find my toys, every one of these is a memory that comes out for people. You know, it generates, of course, income, but that just goes into our own hobbies to build nicer, nicer collections, right? And so having all these items that you see here, I like to give people variety. I like to give even builder sets. Like sometimes somebody wants to, they have parts and they really enjoy completing a set. So when we get into these types of things, then that's when the real purists of the hobby come about. So I like to have a rotating display, catches people's eye, always brings people in, and I get these card backs, right? Of course, not every kid is able to hold on to a, an unopened Imperial Guard, but when you can see a little blister pack here, I'll sell them with the card, and they can display them however they want, uh, at a fraction of the cost. There is essentially part of these things that, that grow with you, right? So I sell things that I have an attachment to. I don't pull in every toy because people buy toys. There's a lot of vendors that can do that. So when I have these things here, it's because I know about them. I intimately know about the countries of origin, um, the makes and the different types of uh, prints that they have, the different photo options. And so I like I create a bond with the customer by telling them a little bit about their own toys that they might even be willing to purchase. As we know, there's been you know nearly a dozen of these films, and each time that Lucas Films and now Disney releases these things, it creates a new fervor, a new desire to create it, to, to have more of these things in people's possession. And so they know, as they time these things out, the people that were my generation are now the generation that has that ex expendable income. And so we're looking for these fine things to take us back to our childhood. So as long as there's people out there watching these releases and the next generation, the next generation, you're gonna see these toys come out. But I still think the vintage stuff is always gonna be the most, most sought after. Well, hi, I'm Brian Swanson, and former owner of CK Comics, and I've got all kinds of good stuff here to get rid of, uh, sell, and you know, just those kind of things. So I got some Star Wars collectibles, I got some Marvel collectibles, just tons of different things. 
toys I was never actually a collector but they are that you know they're great for the kids they're, they're stuff that can bring the imagination out and parting with them is, is really sweet sorrow in a way because I'm getting rid of it I'm getting rid of a past thing that I was doing um, when it came to the comic book store and such and seeing the smiles on the kids faces that's usually the biggest thing about what's going on and then of course those collectors who you know it brings back their childhood so are you a Star Wars collector great you know I've got plenty of Star Wars stuff and people who used to be in the Star Wars business or uh, grew up in the 70s 80s big Star Wars fans um, it always brings back that childhood when people walk into the store. The pavilion is great. First of all, it's cooler in here than it is outside. Um, second of all, with all of the Comic-Con kind of stuff going on, all of the geek stuff going on, it's awesome. Just ran across Jason Meats over there. He's setting up his artwork and things. And then, of course, J uh, John Hernandez, who invited us out. Um, John is superior in, in just what he does. He's got, you know, he's he's been working the, the flea market for a long time, so he knows the ins and outs of everything. Thinking about getting a spot, always thinking about getting a spot. Um, I'm here for a little bit, you know, kind of not testing the waters, but doing it temporary because I was out here before. Um, but who knows? You, know, you just never know. It depends on how the weekend goes and how COVID take, what direction COVID takes us and whether I stick around or not. So as you can see behind me here, we always bring in new boxes, fresh uh, totes full of action figures and toys. Uh, we're known for that. Uh, we uh, aggressively, I'll say, stock our, uh, our booth, our store, and we get known for that. People come in first thing in the morning. We open at 9 a.m. They're here. There's a couple people waiting to see what totes we brought in, what boxes full of stuff, and people love to dig more than anything. I think, uh, you know, as, toy, as a toy hunter myself, I love digging. I mean, I love seeing just a tote full of action figures and just to dive right in to see what you're going to find in there. This is a deal uh, Casey's working on, on with the customer. He just got some figures. I mean, last night Casey drove uh, to some guy's place, bought some new stuff. Guy sees him in a tote and, of course, has to have him. So he's now negotiating price. And, and sometimes we bring stuff in, we don't even have it priced yet. Sometimes we don't even know what it is or what it's worth and it takes a little time. Uh, but, uh, you know, we have you know people that love these toys and they want them right now. They don't want to leave without, you know. So we have to figure out a price with them, negotiate and, uh, and work out a deal. So they'll keep coming back. I would do these two right here if you wanted those two. I would do a hundred bucks on those two. If you wanted just the, the red bearded guy, I was right. He actually is going for like $90, $95. So um, my 70 was kind of in the ballpark, but a little bit more. But I'm not that guy. So I could go down to 50, which I think is a fair offer on him. Recently, uh, Casey and I went on a uh, on a pick. A guy contacted Casey and said he had a couple totes full of uh, action figures, uh, vintage action figures, turtles, uh, He-Man, whatnot. So we went over there and uh, bought the two, uh, just two or three totes. And uh, we negotiated him down just a little bit because the stuff wasn't what we were expecting, it was okay. But uh, at the bottom of one of the totes, and we didn't even see it when we were going through the stuff with the, with the guy, uh, was a rare turtle, an undercover Dawn, the, the version that, that wore the cloth trench coat instead of the plastic trench coat. So, Casey auctioned that off, and I think he got like four hundred and fifty dollars, oh, something, something around, for a Just loose, a incomplete bit, turtle. Out of a, you know, we didn't even know it was in there when we bought it. So that that was a fun day. Okay, so you're looking at kind of our process here. So here's here's raw toys, raw loose figures uh, that Ka Casey uh, and I bought together, or Casey bought. And what the process is, is we'll, we'll take uh, all these, and there could be accessories in the bottom of the tote, and our, our buddy Jesse, um, we pay him or he does trade with us, he'll take them home and put figures together, or if they're, if they're loose and don't have any accessories, well some of them have, are incomplete but have some accessories, we'll put them in these bags for sale, complete ones we'll put in the case um, and sell those for a little bit more. So that's kind of, they come in like this, just random and loose, we dig in them, look for accessories, and, and then put them together, bag them, or case them. 
And this is on, this is constant. This is every week. We do this every week. Just process tons of raw action figures. My name is Garrett and I'm a 48 year old, 16 year old. <laughs> My name is Martin Davidson and I'm here to potentially buy some books from John. I'm Shane and this is my son Declan and my other son Ronan. And um, we're here today because these boys love vintage toys just like I do. It's something we share together and do together. Hi, my name is James Sanchez and yes, I collect pops. I can't tell you when I started, but the man over there started me on uh, Nightmare Before Christmas. I'm Bo Baker. I'm Sammy Mitchell. This is my girlfriend, uh, and I'm finally getting my firehouse that I've been looking for for so long. We're super excited. <laughs> a regular is somebody who comes in who's a collector who um, <clears throat> is constantly looking for new toys and new items to add to his collection. Comes with the pole, comes with the doors that open up. We got the containment unit inside. Got all the bells and whistles. I can finally have a house for my Ecto-1. And I can't wait to go home and drop slime through the top of it on all of my figures. This is awesome. <laughs> I'm dropping slime. <laughs> hey, Martin, what's going on? Not much. How are I'm, you doing? Oh, I'm doing good. I'll be Haven't seen you in a while. We're good. Yeah. Doing well. Came to check out some potential books to see if there's anything I could use in my shop. You could use it all, can't you? Uh, yeah, I thought. You make my day and I could go home. I've got almost 1,800 plus pops in my basement, <laughs> and I'm adding to it again. <laughs> um, I've been collecting uh, video game. Well, actually, I've been playing playing video games and collecting toys uh, since I was in middle school. And then somewhere in the mid '80s, my mom forgot to pay for our storage unit, and we lost all our childhood toys, meaning. Star Wars from the 1970s, Transformers, all gen Generation 1 Transformers, my sister's like My Little Pony Strawberry Shortcake collection. So when I got older, I kind of told myself that I'll probably want to, you know, try to get some of those those things I lost as a child back. And so here we are today. Uh, that's a great comic. First appearance of Carnage, that can do nothing but go up. Right. It is. That, it's an awesome book. And yeah, when that movie, 9.6. It's been skyrocketing actually in the, yep. in the market. You know, so, and it's a CGC 9.6, it's a nice book. So, this is another nice book. This is the first cameo of Wolverine. Wolverine. Boy, that's yep. a huge first appearance. Um, as you can tell, they're pretty big 80s uh, fans. They love anything pop culture from the 80s with uh, Ghostbusters and everything. So what they do is they work all week and they do different things. And actually, boys, why don't you tell them? What do you, how do you guys earn your toys? We clean up our room and, and we, and we clean our living room, and I make my bed, and I... That's good. Yeah, and Ronan, what do you do to earn your toys? Um, I, 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 I clean up my room, and, and, and also I, I clean the toilets and clean the windows. You do. And I clean the living room. Yep, absolutely. So that's what we do. We try to teach them that you have to do hard work to get their toys, but it's a great way that they can earn them. That's also the thing we can do together as father and son to come out and check everything out. What are you thinking? I know you got to make money. I'd give you... I'm going to probably sell it for about 500. I'd give you like 350. 350. <laughs> Boy, you're, you're rude. ruthless. Ruthless, I know. So we love the flea market. It's one of our favorite places. Come here about two times a month. Um, Cause we're like I said, we're big toy collectors, all three of us. Uh, we enjoy coming for the day. We grab, you know, funnel cakes and lemonade. Uh, we love looking at all the toys that are around and the other stuff that you can find here too. You know, at a flea market, you can find really unique stuff and it's super affordable, especially as a dad, you know, and I'm, I'm in the military, so we're on a budget. And so with that budget, we can get a lot more stuff, you know, for our money. Um, so I like Spider-Man and Knight Rider and I also love my proton pack. <laughs> it's so cool. I like He-Man and I like Spider-Man and also I, I like also, I like Knight Rider and Back to the Future. Mm -hmm. That's true, he's got a lot of toys. Ah, Martin, I've known Martin for a long time. He's one of my closest friends in the comic book business. Uh, he always did all my comic cons that we did. Uh, very, very knowledgeable. 
I mean, a lot of my friends that, that I deal a lot with everything, and he's probably the one of the comic book experts. In it. He knows comics grading wise, how to grade them. Uh, his shop, Kapal, they do uh, pressing of books. They clean up books and, get, and they send them off to be graded. Um, very, very knowledgeable. I love selling to Martin. I've sold him probably thousands of dollars of books. He would be my go-to guy whenever I got golden age stuff, stuff that I really can't sell here at the flea market. He'll take it and he'll put it in his shop and triple his money. And it <laughs> makes me feel bad. <laughs> yeah. I wish it was that easy. I actually have a little Fisher, like dinky little firehouse right now that's been taking the place for this thing. So I can't wait to get that out of there and put this in. Um, I've been looking for it for like, I don't know, a couple years at least. And they're always so pricey and everything. So Casey helped me out and this jumping up out of nowhere, I, I, I couldn't say no to it. I'm super excited. His collection is growing bigger and bigger. Every time we come here, we find a new figure for it. It's pretty awesome. Like. I'm pumped. I'm pumped for it. <laughs> a nostalgia for me. Um, I started with The Nightmare Before Christmas and then it ended up going to Ghostbusters because I liked the movie and it just kept evolving around movies. And then it went to games and then it went to cartoons and even more. The very first time I met him was when I first opened up my shop and the first pop I sold him was a Ghostbusters 2-pack limited edition San Diego Comic-Con. 2017 I believe <laughs> and after that it's been a regular friend ever since and he's bought lots and lots of pops and I always try to hunt down everything I can for him. Just a big kid at heart and just uh, I love coming here every weekend because Casey's got something new every single time. I bought a, a vintage uh, Shogun uh, Godzilla from him last month uh, and he, he hooked it up with a pretty good price. So he's pretty reasonable as well. Um, that's why I like coming to him. So it has everything, the toll is right here. Okay. They, they kept it, uh, no, you know, yeah, they shipped that's it awesome. Me. And then I looked at this, there was no chips or anything on this either, so. Yeah, it's a little great dusty. condition. That's, I'll take it, I'll take the dust. I'll take the dust. <laughs> he had like a Voltron, uh, like a pretty vintage Voltron in the box and I was on the fence about it and then I told him that I would probably come back next weekend for it and I did. I went the following weekend, it was gone, so. Over here, I mean, he his deals are so good. You gotta you gotta be quick because if you mull on something and you wait a day or two, he might be gone the next day, and then you're just kicking yourself in the butt for it. I know you've been looking for a while, so I'm extremely excited. When I when I found this one, I was like, I gotta call you. Yeah, I, I was I, like, I was blown away.